You're listening to Adi Shokbe Live, the Afrobeat podcast. Right. See anybody making sense when humanity, has when your removed. humanity has been removed. Is removed, you know. And that's one thing that we need to really discuss in Africa that we don't, you know, hmm. the restoration of our dignity and humanity as African people. Facts. You know, we we act like it is not something that we should do. It's not important. We all act like we are millionaires in waiting. Hmm. That's what we've been sold. You know, everybody thinks one day is your turn. Or somebody you know is going to make it and then everybody is on the way up. You know, but the truth is, even the World Bank has said, you know, you have more chance, a greater chance of winning the lottery than dying in a class above the one you were born in. Wow. So you have a greater chance of winning the lottery, lottery, which is absolutely no chance at all. <laughs> <laughs> than dying, dying in a, in a class, better class in a class than above one the one you were born in. God you damn. know, so many people even in your church like, might even make money. Right? Even rise up better than your parents, yeah. than your parents. But at the end of the day, you know, you find that many people end up exactly when even they started worse lower than, than where they started from. Yeah, and I've seen it in every generation. You can look at many professions that Africa, even in the politics of Africa, you know. They are broke ex head of states. Facts. Uh, I mean, facts. <laughs> facts. I don't think there's a broke ex American president. Mm. But in Africa, you will find broke ex head of states. You know? mm. There's one guy in Central African Republic, I forgot his name. You know what I mean? Uh, listen. <laughs> the last time they caught up with him on BBC he was homeless or something like that. God you know? damn I kind it. of going. You know, and many people look at Kazavubu, somebody like that that, ruled, that destroyed the whole of Congo before Mobutu came. You know, don't Kivu you don't province. Even hear his you don't name even anymore. know who they are anymore. You know, so yeah. it is the same way in athletics, our sports oh. athletes, our oh, big footballers. You know, that I don't even want to because I know someone. Yeah. I don't want to name names. Yeah, 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 yeah. People that have gone to play World Cups, that yeah. have won Nations Cup hmm. for Nigeria. You know, are back to trying to feed. Yeah, so that's how it is for us. You know, as African people, and we must understand that. We must understand that, and no matter how hard it seems, we must react to that. Hmm. National pride is always very important in Africa. Oh, I'm Nigerian, I'm this and that, and, and the third. But something that I've picked from someone like you and a few other people as well is the Pan-African pride. Um, yes, I'm a Nigerian. But I am an African first. When anybody sees me, they don't know whether you're Nigerian or Ghanaian. They know that you're from Africa. Yeah. How important is the Pan-African pride and Pan-Africanism to the whole agenda of lifting up our people? Well, now, there's two types of Pan-Africanism, mm. you know, in a way. Yes. I wouldn't say the other one is Pan-Africanism, but it is said it is Pan-Africanism, so I have to say, mm. you know... There's the Pan-Africanism that people want to be Africans to exploit Africa. That the only, talk, talk, the only time they want to be Africans is, is when they have they the opportunity to reap, to reap, to exploit. Facts. You know, so, for example, I'll use our politicians in yep. Nigeria. They are such Pan-Africanists. So hmm. they are leaders in Africa. They wear Agbada. Hmm. You know, they do all those things. But the only time they want to be identified as African, that they act as African, is because they have this opportunity to benefit from Africa. So when they are their own free time, when they are not taken from us, when they are to decide for themselves, they want to build houses in England, send the kids abroad, send the kids, they have, medical they, they attention in London. Yeah. You know, because I don't know. They all have to. I mean, how can you be ruling us and you giving your kids? Uh, residency in another place, you are paying taxes in another place. So what about we that are giving you all these things in the first place? Hmm. You know, so they are Pan Africanists like that. Wow. You know, so that for me is not Pan Africanism. Absolutely. You know? Like, if you look at the history of Liberia, you know, this was the idea behind Liberia. Oh, Africans should come back home. Hmm. But the ones that came from America came with the mindset of exploiting their own brothers and sisters, and that led to the whole Samuel Do coup hmm. against those. Yummy Johnson yeah. and all those guys, yeah. So they right, rose up against those... Uh, the ones that came, the, yeah. yeah. So we don't want that kind of relationship. I don't want the relationship where uh, Africans are coming to Africa or Africans in Africa see other Africans as a means to their own end, something mm. to exploit. And say that, oh, because we are doing it instead of the white man. Mm. You know, it is good for Africans, you know. Mm. 
So then, then there's the other Pan-Africanism, which I believe is the healthy one, where we want to put our people's interests first. Yeah. Where it is not because we are hating anybody or we don't want to uh, be, a, we just don't want to be anything else but who we are and what we are meant to be. Hmm. You know, like what I was saying to them when I cancelled my show in Morocco. Yes, weekend, yes. You know, Sad I said to story. them, it is not that, this is not for clout. I'm not going to make a big statement and say, oh, Morocco is this, Morocco... Nah, this is not what it's about. What it is about is that somebody has to mourn that our people... Died. Died. You know, if no African government will acknowledge... Will say anything. We have to now revert to what Nkrumah was telling us in his last work, conscient hmm. Conscientization, the Conscientism, hmm. sorry. When he was saying to us that African people have to begin to be the model outside of this our governments because our governments will never be what we want them to be these people will never be we have to start moving the way we want to be hmm. and that's how they will start seeing that, that this they, is no longer their people. africa hmm. you understand absolutely listen um music you're you're on tour at the moment i asked you a question before the camera uh opened up i asked you how many dates you were doing during this <laughs> 90 day tour how many dates did you how many I think we're about 30 days. <laughs> and you said that that's, uh, that's nothing, isn't it? It's not a lot. I mean, okay, have you seen my brother's tour date? <laughs> I've seen. Exactly. And that's Femi Kuti, yeah. <laughs> Femi is, I mean, so that is usually what it's like, you know, every other day we're boom, 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 boom. But this tour, I didn't even think it was going to be this big. I'm actually surprised by the amount of work that has suddenly come out since we announced that, okay, mm, we're going to tour Down this the year. road. Yeah, so I think my fans missed me. Absolutely. You know, we are going to keep going on and off till like the 10th of December or something. Now, you are, you were born into music. Uh, you've watched some of the greatest musicians. You mentioned your brother, Femi, you've, your dad. Practice, we have, prepare for sh shows. What are your thoughts about some of the young folks that are making music nowadays that... What areas do you think they can improve in and how can they get that improvement? Uh, well, you know, to each his own. Hmm. Uh, people that are called musicians these days couldn't be musicians when I was growing up. Hmm. So it, it's different, you know. And this is what I'm saying. that Different doesn't necessarily mean bad. Bad. Hmm. You know, so the world is changing and that's what that is. What we shouldn't ask is for an elephant to climb, climb a tree. I wouldn't expect I mean the, if if I was an artist right that I was mainstream yeah and society had made it in such a way that every single person knows my songs and when I go to when I go on stage they are singing the song anyway everybody is singing it word for word you know I mean what the world says do I have to do up there I have to wave my hand around and they are doing exactly I think I don't I think and I They're think, doing how yeah, this society has... And it's, it's how it should be. People are there to have fun. Mm. They are there to sing. They are there to, you know, let go of something, you know. So they give them that. I don't see why there should be any criticism that they are not suddenly Put becoming... work. No, suddenly becoming what they are not. Mm. I mean, mm. if uh, they were the instrumentalists from the beginning and that is what they are known for... Yes, and then suddenly this person cannot play his instrument again. Mm. You know, I will understand. Many of the artists that we love in the world today, we don't even know how they sound really. Fast. Because everybody's auto -tune. on auto-tune. Quick message from Alat NG. I'm joined by Fumilayo from Alat, of course, NG from Wema Bank. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. Uh, we're here to speak about the app, the banking app, Alat.ng. Yes. Please speak to me. First of all, what is this banking app? So it is a bank. Great. Not just an app. It mm. is a bank. Um, and essentially what it does is it allows you to do any banking transaction from the comfort of your phone. Wow. What is interesting is that you even sign up right there from your phone. You don't have to go to any banking hall to do anything. So you upload your picture, your signature, everything you do from the comfort of wherever you are. And it takes just five minutes. Now, a lot of us in diaspora want to have banks in Nigeria, bank accounts in Nigeria. And one of the biggest problems we've faced or the challenges we face is, is it the VPN number? Is it the v how do we cross that 
Awesome. So what we've done, and um, if you go to our site, mm. alat.ng, we have a list of um, agents in the UK here where you can go to and register for your BVN. And interestingly, we've added on the NIN. Right now, you need the NIN to do everything, everything. in Nigeria. So once you do Sounds that, same it's, way. it's possible. I know. I personally cannot deal that I don't know what my favorite artist sounds like himself. Mm. You know? That's mm. another thing, but that's me. But the world is not made up of me alone. Facts. You know, and this is what Facts. one of the things that affects us a lot, that really fucks up the whole game in Nigeria too, mm. that every single Nigeria thinks that they are the whole 7 billion people in the world. <laughs> every single Nigerian <laughs> thinks they are the 200 million. So one Nigerian man can meet Bola Tinubu, for example. Yeah. And Bola Tinubu gives him 20 million naira for something. And we go around shouting that Bola Tinubu is a good man because he was good to him. Mm. You know, suddenly... That, regardless of anything else, that yeah. has happened, you know, mm. uh, maybe Peter B was stingy to you once. <laughs> Suddenly you go around saying Peter B is stingy, <laughs> not knowing that he's not really stingy to the people he's not stingy to. Yeah, you know, yeah. so that's just the way. Uh, what is what does your own rehearsal, you know? Oh well, you, what what's that like? Talk to me so about. I, well, how personally, you rehearse, personally, yeah. uh, I have to practice like maybe every day for at least two hours now. When I was growing up, it was three, four, five, six hours. A day. A day. You know, mastering your instrument is something. Yes. Uh, and then, but now, just to stay sharp, yeah. do like an hour, two hours a day. Um, but I practice with the whole band two times a week. Mm. Um, yeah, and that's it. That's it. It's like when I uh, when I heard Usain Bolt, Usain Bolt was like, he trains back in the day when he was breaking yes, records. Yes, not, yes. Not, when, not Usain Bolt, the footballer. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Usain yeah. Bolt, the track man, you know. <laughs> well, like three hours a day, yeah. three times a day, three times a week for two hours. Or was That's it, it. Yeah. two yeah. times a week for three hours? One of the two. And the woman was so shocked, like, That's so little. Yeah. He's like, yeah, because the real work has, has gone, you know, when you were past. young. Yeah. So you now, know? So now you just work to stay sharp. You work to stay sharp, you know. You dropped uh, projects in the past, probably about seven, seven albums or how many? Yeah, well, studio albums, four, yeah, four. but total albums, about seven. About seven. You have a new single um, that <laughs> you premiered on stage. You you gave us a little dose on stage, <laughs> which was dope. I, you know, it was nice to, to hear you also talk about, you know, your re that record, the way you spoke about it before you performed the record. And you're now telling me that this is going to be a part of a bigger plan, a bigger project. Yeah. Speak to me about this record first of all, and then the bigger project behind that. Uh, okay, well, I'm I'm working on my next uh, my next record now, which yeah. will be out soon. We have uh, uh, all the material ready, so I wanted to release like a teaser. So in Lagos, we did an event with Cloud Studios. Yep. You know, Dotto and them at Cool FM. And yeah, you, you were swagged out in that, man. I gotta <laughs> say, whoever the stylist was, they've not. <laughs> they, 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 yeah. They've not, was, they've not even. Uh, yeah. They've not even released it yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. You know, funny yeah. enough, but it was a good session, and we decided to release that session, mm. the audio version. Yes. You know, like a little sing, like singles for yeah. the next for the next record, and we did um, Emi Aluta and Love and Revolution. Yeah. You know, so. This has been put out like a soft release. Yeah. And also because these songs have made their way into some TV and video projects. Yeah. So I need to get the licensing and my publishing. So that's why I really have to put it out. Not because, you know. Yeah, so but next year we are looking to put out the main album. Uh, it's going to call, uh, it's going to be called Heavier Yet. Hmm. Heavier Yet is short, you know. Heavier Yet lays the crownless head. Hmm. That's the... You know, because people the say crownless head. Yeah, That's the, like the reverse of yeah, the rich. This because people always say heavy lays the, 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 the head, head that wears the, the crown. crown. And I'm saying heavier yet is the crownless head. Yeah. Wow. You know, because no matter what the king is going through, he's still going to sleep on his silk bed with his silk pillows, <laughs> with his and he's, and he's going to fuck a queen that night. <laughs> you know. <laughs> no matter how bad it is, the king is sleeping with the queen that night. <laughs> You know, but imagine the crownless head, you know. We, we agree. Yeah, it's just the struggles. <laughs> yes, it's heavy to wear the crown, but don't sell us that. Our whole life is harder than yours. Uh, Definitely. Facts. This, facts. This, facts. This narrative, you know, going around. I saw you uh, perform at the Glastonbury again. This is not your first time showing up there. 
but this performance looked even more incredible. The, the audience was vast. It was broadcast live on BBC. And, and the little clip I saw, you were saying people over what? Things. Hmm. Yeah, because that's the, the name of the song was, is actually T-O-P. Hmm. Things over, over people. people. You know, I, I'm talking about people at the top. You know, that's how they make it to the top. Of yeah. the, you know, and they want, as humanity, us to only value the things that we can own. Yeah. That's the real narrative of the world. Fuck. That value should be taken away from those things that are innate to us as human beings. So we don't value kindness. We don't value love. We don't value trustworthiness, loyalty. We don't value um, empathy, sympathy. Hmm. In fact, those things are seen as being weak. You know, um... What the world wants us to do is to only value things that we can own, even to human beings. That's why if your kids don't even do what you say, you are allowed to say you want to disown your kids mm. because they don't. They are not following your orders. They are not mm. acting like things you know mm. that you can manipulate. Not understand that you know your kids. Yes, although they are from you, they you know they are not of life. You. Yeah. You know, even though they are, sorry, although they are off you, they are not from, from you. Yeah. You know, children, are in, they are a manifestation of life. Mm. Life wanting to continue. Hmm. You know, this has nothing to do with you. You are the bow. The kids are the arrow. Fuck. We agree, but life is the archer here. Hmm. Sends them in what direction? Wherever. You know, so you find many people that cannot control their kids, do not love those kids, that cannot control their wives, do not love those women. Hmm. Or vice versa, or love, don't love their husbands because we want to thingify people. Hmm. You know, we want to value property, we can own it, but we don't value the rainforest because nobody owns it. Hmm. You know, we value our pools more than we value our rivers. Wow. You understand? And the river is more important to than humanity than the swimming pool. You know, but you can go and pollute all the rivers in the world because you are rich. But someone cannot throw chewing gum in your swimming pool. Hmm. Or if I come to your house and I pee in your swimming pool, suddenly I'm a despicable human being. But here you are with a company dumping toxic waste in our communal river. That wow. is okay. You know, but I can't pee in your pool. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, now is a very important... Pee in all pools. <laughs> <laughs> now is a very important part, uh, time for Nigeria, uh, it's political season again, where Nigeria will select its president. Um, you've been very vocal. You, you've relaunched the, your own party and movement, getting people to stand up. First of all, what are your thoughts about where the country is, the choices that the country has to pick from now? Okay, let me just clear some doubts from the mind of Nigerian people with this interview real quick. Yeah. I was going to say this on my live, but since I'm here, yeah, yeah, let's just say it. Yeah. You know, family values will not save Nigerian people. Hmm. Good family values. We have lost our good family values. Hmm. Because you know why? On the eve of our colonization, on the eve of our enslavement, we had good family values. Mm. It did not stop us from being enslaved. Mm. That did not stop us from being colonized. Y you understand? Mm. Uh, embracing your culture. Because it can't save us. Sure. Because guess what? On the eve of being colonized and enslaved, we, we, are, had culture. we are embracing our culture. So what were we missing? We are missing the organizational capacity to confront our enemy. And that is what we are still missing today. Our nation cannot be above or rise greater than the consciousness of its people. Hmm. As long as Nigerian people feel like somebody has to come and save them, that they are not, it's not their job, they, it's their job to follow somebody, you know. Because we don't want to act. We want the illusion of action. You know, so you see everybody online shouting obedient, obedient. I'm obedient because you want Obi to walk while you have the illusion. To sit down. You've never asked Obi what his plans are. You hmm. know, you've not seen his... Uh, manifesto. Manifesto. You've not even seen anything. Obedient, obedient, you know. So, we as Nigerian people must understand that we are not Europeans. We are not Americans. The fact that Europeans and Americans are doing certain things doesn't mean Africans can, can move that way. Hmm. 
You know, not everything that you can do that you should do. You know, all these things we do because we see people, reality TV show, everybody watching TV, TikToking, all these things we are wasting our time with because we see that well, Americans are doing it. They have already developed their nation. They have built a nation. Now they are enjoying hmm. that nation. You, you've not built a nation. You want, want to be enjoying enjoy the uh, illusion virtual of... reality. You want to be enjoying the illusion. Exactly. Our duty right now, every African, your duty is to build your nation, whatever that entails. You don't have the time that Europeans have. I'm sorry to say, you don't have the time that Americans have. You don't have it. You don't even have the money that they have. Listen, Apple, Apple is worth $1.7 trillion. The Nigerian economy was rebased in 2015 by Okonjo Iweala, and it was worth $505 billion. Apple is worth three times Nigeria. One company in America is worth three times the entire, that's including our Dangote and our Te Dollar and all these people that we fall on top of ourselves to act like we have something. All of us included. One company in America. And that economy has shrunk 70% since then. God damn. Exactly. So it's no longer 505 billion. It has gone down to like 150 something. And Microsoft is still on 1.7 trillion and counting. We've not added Apple, all the Fortune 500. You know, so this um, uh, token that we that they throw dangling in our face, the dango tail, as if something exciting is happening. Maybe it's the reason why a lot of young people don't understand. And our education as well does not link us to our duty as nation builders. Mm. So you go to school, for example, you want to be an engineer, you're not told that, you know, you are becoming an engineer because we have to develop an integrated sewage system in Nigeria, integrated drainage system in Nigeria. You know, you have to design... So you can bring your skills yeah, to, to nation, building. nation building. Engineering is sold to you as a way to get a job. Facts. To collect salary and 1, move your Take family. Take care of your own family. Yeah. So that's where the elites play the game on us because they control their education. They know what they are doing. You know, they don't want to stop this party. So they understand how to distract young people condition you from an early age, you understand? So this is the factor. Until Niger Whether you do 100 elections like this, the only power that is circulating in this Nigeria is tyrannical power. Huh. So whatever you like, as long as this is the game being played, APC, PDP, it might change tomorrow to PDA, DMC, it might change next tomorrow to what was SDP and NRC, it might change to PPP, MNPP, uh, NCC. The name can change constantly. But it but will still continue to continues. be the tyrannical power until Nigerian people begin to understand their duty to build their nations and engage from an organization level in the grassroots to begin to build a mass movement, to create people power, hmm. a people-powered government, not a tyrannical-powered government that we have now, but a real people-powered government who wants to use or whose interest lies in the development of the nation, hmm. in the restoring of the dignity of the Nigerian people. Not this tyrannical power that looks to secure um, personal interest and exploit and extract as much as possible from Nigerian people. No matter what you say, as long as you engage with this, that's what you will become. I don't care who you are. I don't hmm. care how good you think your heart is. Once you, you get into that system, you, you have to play people always say, oh, we have to go and change things from within. Forget Nigeria. Nigeria is too small. In the whole world, give me one example or one time that anybody has changed anything from within. One, one example. So we can follow the model. Hmm. At least, you know, so we have this model of this person that went into a bad thing and, and changed, changed it good there. from inside. Just give us the example so we can go in and know what we are doing because so far... <laughs> You know, it's like a cockroach. My dad used to say, it's a cockroach that has been eaten by a chicken. Hmm. He could chicken eat a cockroach. The cockroach now go inside the chicken. And that's how talking. Say, I'm going to change this chicken from... <laughs> <laughs> you, you're already in there. You are, di you are digesting. You are adding Damn. to the feathers. Facts. You know, so that's all that. And as I say, they control the media, control all the influencers. So this narrative is sold. You know, that's, that's the world. You know, the... Power means you can sell your narrative as fact. So people don't question the need as narrative. You know, they just think that's the only thing we can do that. Whereas we have this option 
You know, just like when people talk about free will. Yeah. Ah, God has given us free will. Is it that you do or you don't? I say that's not free will. Free will is actually you do, you don't, or you don't participate at, at all. all. Where is that part? We don't have that part. Ah, there's no free will. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> this is the same that they, that's how they sell the youth. Oh, go and join these people, APC or PDP or any party that these uh, elites are controlling without saying to us, we can build our own thing. Mm. All we need is to do is to take it, take our future serious enough to take our time. It's not even the money. People say, oh, do you know how much you need? No, what you actually need is talent. The money that people spend is to buy talent. Mm. Whether it's a, a talent of tout, yep. whether it's talent of musician, whether it's talent PR of journalist, talent. it's yeah. talent they're spending the money on. You know, and I say to people all the time, you know, that's why Nigerians sell their votes. Because all you professionals leading up to the election, you sell your talent to these people. The only thing the common man has is his vote. I mean, there's no way anybody in Nigeria wow. will sell their vote if the journalist did not sell his words, if the civil servant did not sell his service, if lawyer did not sell law, if judge did not sell judgment, hmm. if oil worker did not sell our diesel away, if banker did not launder, if musician did not sing, we all sell. And the poor people see us selling and making a killing. killing. Then you tell them not to and take the 500 their own turn. I know that even you make this killing, you are um, playing one kind of game on this elite that we are taking this money, they were going back to the grassroots yeah. and we are building our communities and helping them elevate and teaching them. No, we are taking it and Flying walking around out. with Mopo, like the oppressors, you know, yeah. dealing with these people, doing the way everybody is doing to them. Then, you know, it's time for election. You now say, hmm, hmm. Don't take money and Don't vote. take money. You are the one spoiling Nigeria. When you take money and vote, you are the one spoiling Nigeria. Come on, that's too sinister. That's too sinister. Damn. Trust me, if we're in, if journalists, musicians, uh, banker, oil worker, civil servant, if everybody did not collect money in the three years, by the time it's election time, poor man will not collect money because there will be something happening in Nigeria. Facts. We would have seen that something is happening here. Something is happening here, you know. So I think Facts. it's, you know, it's just a way for everybody to cop out. You know? Absolutely. Listen, I know you have very important meetings today <laughs> and you got to run, but I had to bring you in for this no, first chat. No, my pleasure, man. We'll be doing it a lot more. Um, how's the missus and the little princess? Yeah, man, they're, they're coming next week to town. I mean, real story before I check out. Yes. You know, this man right here, you know, he'll be wondering why every time I'm around, I call him, you know, I chase him around. It's because even before, I mean, like 10 years ago, there's a story. Like, and I was, we were doing a show, one of my first shows in England. I'm trying to get the Nigerian community to come out. And I was trying to sell out the show, you know. And there was Ben TV then. Yeah. You were in Ben TV yeah, then too. We're doing but you also had there. Factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your own thing. yeah my brother, you know? DJ Larry. Yeah. yeah, so Ben was just acting like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I called him and he came all the way with his whole crew to Woolwich and he was yeah. waiting for me, chasing me. Oh,